after the horrible act of terror in Moscow's Krokos City Hall a few days ago. There are many questions remain to Russia's federal police force, and the biggest one, of course, being how was it possible for the policeman to show up at the scene of the mass shooting only one hour after the shooting started and 40 minutes after the shooters left and escaped when the large police station is located literally around the corner, some 50 meters or 150 feet from where the shooting took place. Why it took the policeman one hour to show up? After watching this video, where I explain the difference between Russian police and American police and any other Western police for that matter, you will understand everything about Russian police easily and why they act the way they act. And understanding how Russian police works, motives behind its actions is crucial for understanding how Russia works in general. This case, when one of the worst mass shootings in Russia, and it could still turn out the worst one because the death toll is still rising. So this case illustrates my message today perfectly well. The large police station located inside Krokus facilities around the corner from Krokus City Hall, 50 meters or 150 feet, here you can see in the map, the Google Maps, it's literally around the corner. And this is how the police station looks like on the outside. This police station is a specially designed police facility with a cell for detained people, with a safe gun room full of police guns, and it is always full of policemen, because this is Moscow. Maintaining law and order in Krokus City Hall is the direct responsibility of the policemen from this station. So it only makes sense when the first 112 calls, and that's Russian equivalent of America's 911, started coming in about the shooting, all policemen available had to take, grab their guns and run to Krokus City Hall. It would realistically take them two minutes to arrive at the scene. And how many lives could have been saved? Dozens, if not hundreds? Instead, the policemen from that police station run the opposite direction, saving their lives. They returned only 40 minutes after the terrorists left. 40 minutes after it became safe for them to return. They took their sweet time, and that's pretty horrible. But wait, it gets even worse. There was a policeman inside Krokus City Hall what appears to be a member of nearby K-9 unit, with his police dog, a large German Shepherd. Right here, take a closer look. When first shots were fired, this man flees the building along with everyone else. He doesn't take out his gun and tries to stop the terrorists. No, he doesn't even try to help people out. He runs for his life. Of course, the police started denying it was one of their own immediately after this footage appeared and started surfacing around Russia. But who could that be? In the police uniform, K-9 unit, with a K-9 dog and a large police K-9 unit truck parked right in front of the entrance, and that truck the terrorist walked right by, um, who could that be if not a cop? Uh, you know, folks, that's... Pretty horrible stuff. But let's find out why it happened. The policemen had their reason not to protect people, but to run away. To understand this case, we must understand what uh, is Russian police, what its purpose, what its funding sources, what its goals, and, you know, all things Russian police. By the way, cases both tragic and comical involving Russian police happen every single day. Most of them may never make it to the big media and are lost to public attention. Russian propaganda usually downplays them, just like it's downplaying this crucial question right now. Why it took the cops one hour to show up at the crime scene. That's a crime in itself. And it is being covered up massively. But such news are not lost with me. I find the news concerning Russian police very important 
as their crucial indicators of current state of Russian society. I identify the news and make them available daily in my Patreon account for patrons and in YouTube sponsorship section available to the sponsors of Inside Russia. Nine important news a day with my commentaries and explanations three times a day, three news at every upload. Please sign up to become a patron or a sponsor to get access to the news from Russia that matter and aren't shown anywhere else. The links are down below. Now, let me further explain of how things work in Russia. This is the most important thing you need to understand about Russian police right now. It is federal. Federal. It is a part of Russian government, a government agency. It's centralized. It's not even called the police, but instead the Ministry of Internal Affairs. It has one boss, yes, the Minister of Internal Affairs, who takes orders from Russia's Prime Minister, or at least on paper. And Russian Prime Minister takes orders from Russia's president. In reality, the Minister of Internal Affairs reports directly to the Dark Lord himself. If you haven't connected the dots yet, Russian Federal Police Force is a part of the Siloviki, those government agencies that are armed and have legal rights to use violence against Russian people. Russian police is a crucial part of the vertical of power that Vladimir Putin has built and that has allowed him to remain in power for 24 years now. But let's rewind some 28 years back and take a look at me, younger Konstantin, who just arrived to the USA in 1996. So many things surprised me, but a few things shocked me. And one of those things was that America did not have police in my understanding of what police was about. I couldn't believe at first that America did not have centralized police, the federal police. I could not believe that all policemen were locals and were funded locally by local city or town. I couldn't believe that the policemen didn't answer or take orders from Washington and even state governors. I couldn't believe that the regular citizens could go and uh, file a complaint and demand investigation if they felt necessary, and if wrongdoing detected, someone would be responsible and fired, most likely. Things like that were crazy to imagine where I was coming from. At first, I couldn't believe that the goal of the police was to serve me and protect me. Well. I did find out that quite soon. I lived and worked in Old Orchard Beach in southern Maine, and my work involved dealing with police quite often. I attended town council meetings um, where the chief of police was present, and he answered us for the work of the police department. I, on a couple of occasions, made him very uncomfortable with my questions. A 24-year-old kid an immigrant speaking broken English, I made the local police chief answer me and made cops change their behavior on a couple of occasions, on a couple of issues. In Russia, I wouldn't even get close to anyone with authority inside the police force. And if I did by some kind of miracle and demanded, nothing good would happen to me as a result. It was simply unthinkable. It's still unthinkable. Now, in America, questioning police, demanding answers, etc., can be done for one single reason. American police is locally funded. The pay comes from the people. They employ the police. The police serves, protects, and what's most important, answers to the people. The locals, through a direct vote, or in most cases through selected councilmen and or mayor, can fire police chief can replace a police chief. They can change how the police acts. They have such rights, and people do use their rights. And I am a witness to that. At least that's how it was when I lived in America some 20 years ago. Please let me know in the comments if it's still the case or things are different now. And when I tell Russians that America does not have police in their understanding of that word, the federal police, they don't believe me. Or sometimes they think I, that I lie, I am uh, misinformed, 
or I'm outright crazy. They are so skeptical of this idea because they don't believe that people can govern themselves. They don't believe in the concept of we are the people. They simply don't know better. Because Russia is extremely different. The police in Russia, like I said, is the one, the unified entity. The government agency serving the government on paper and in reality serving the powers that control Russia. The decisions are made in Moscow, on the very top, by very few people and sent through all vertical levels to the very bottom of the policemen on the ground in every Russian city, town or village. Russian police has two goals. Main and secondary. The main goal is to keep the status quo of Russian powers. To make sure that no people protest. To make sure that there aren't any threats to the Tsar and his absolute power. The chief of country's police, the big boss, the minister of internal affairs. Note how the federal police is called in Russia. It's all in the name. The Ministry of Internal Affairs. In my opinion, the policemen just have to serve and protect the citizens. But in Russia, they control the internal affairs. It's none of the business, right? The big boss takes orders from even bigger boss. The orders to serve and protect the holder of absolute power, the czar. The one who feeds the policemen. The one who pays the policemen. They get their salaries from the federal budget. Read by the mercy of the czar. And what's very important, the policemen get the power to use violence against the citizens, also from the Tsar. So that's the main goal of the police. And there's also a secondary goal, to enrich policemen, to enrich themselves. You see, in Russia, great power, and I'm talking of the power to use violence, of course, great power gets you, no, not great responsibility, but the great opportunity. The policemen are people, after all. They need to feed their families, they want to have good, rich life. Average monthly salary of a Russian policeman now is around 64,000 rubles, according to a job hunting website called goratrabot.ru. And that is around $688 per month, or $172 per week, or 4 American dollars per hour. Now, good life in Russia costs lots of money. Everything that Russians buy and used is made abroad and imported and paid by for by the US dollars. A large screen TV in Russia costs around $1,000, just like anywhere else. An apartment in Moscow costs $200,000. And a house near Moscow costs even more. A car costs $30,000. And that's low-end cheap Chinese crap now these days. And the co-ops are people, after all, and they want things. They want their families to have a good life. They want their children to grow up in abundance. This is the equation. On one side, you have a Russian cop working hard, working eight hours shifts, earning $4 per hour, having needs and wanting good life for himself and his family. And on the other hand, you have the very same cop possessing much power over citizens, allowed to use violence over citizens and having responsibility to follow orders to protect the powers at B. And have an understanding, if caught doing something red-handed, you know, nothing will be done to him. He'd be fired at worst as the Russian police never gives up its own. What happens then? It's easy to figure out. Corruption. As I've heard traffic policemen say many times, don't pay me salary at all. Just give me a police warrant and put me on the road and I'll feed myself and my superiors as well, the ones who put me there. A personal story. Once back in the day, I had $4,800 stole stolen from my bank account. I was paying for something uh, with my bank card. Some crooks had made a copy of it, and later they cleaned my bank, bank account. Um, I ran to a local police station where ATM, where they cashed out, was, and told the cops my story, demanding they would start investigating. 
Eh, they were very hesitant and slow. They started explaining how this happens every happened every day to many good people, and crooks never get found, and how I could forget about my money, etc. Then, after quite some time, one of the officers, um, you know, came to me and privately hinted me that if I were to make their time worthwhile, for example, share with them a part whatever they would find and recover, they would make sure that they would allocate all the resources to catch the crooks. But if I were to go on the street and protest, or demand free and fair elections, or try to lay flowers to Alexei Navalny's owner, oh, the police would not need to be reminded. They would show up in about 30, 30 seconds and they would arrest me very quickly. Of course, there are exceptions, and there are some good cops in Russia, but there are very few of them. So that gives you an idea of how Russian cops, Russian police force works, how they're fulfilling their secondary objective. And they have tons of ways to earn a buck or two on the side, or a thousand or two thousand bucks on the side. I think you get the idea. So the summary. The police in America serves and protects people because people hire the police to do so. People have the right to fire and hire police and tell police what to do. The police in Russia serves and protects the absolute power who pays the police for that. And on top of that, Russian police has a right to use violence against citizens. When police earns a buck or two on the side, the absolute power usually looks the other way. And this explains why the policeman from that police station at Krokos City Hall did not run to kill the terrorists, but rather ran away hiding from the terrorists. This is the logic behind it. An average cop thinks, why well, didn't join the force for this? To put myself in the way of bullets protecting people? My orders are different to neutralize protesters and watch for the threats to the authorities who I serve and protect, the same authorities who give me orders and pay me. So I'll run and hide until the danger is done, gone, and later I'll be praised and rewarded because propaganda will make up stories of what a great job I did. And they will sell the stories to Russian people, that's what they do. And this is the logic behind actions of Russian policemen. The logic explains actions of Russian police well. It also explains the policemen running away from Rostov on Don when it was captured by Wagner Group last June during the mutiny. They simply hid away and waited until the situation cleared. Whether to continue taking orders from the old boss, if he remained in the Kremlin, or to see perhaps there's a new boss in town in the Kremlin, then the police would start taking orders from the new boss. Before I finish my message, please like this video, subscribe so you won't miss any further updates, and you could buy me a coffee at buymecoffee.com if you'd like. Back to the message. This system is rotten. But this is how the totalitarian states work, and this is exactly how Russia is working now, unfortunately. Now you know. And I'm warning you, don't let your politicians and the police get out of hand, otherwise you will end up just like Russia. And millions of us had to flee Russia exactly because of that. Because the politicians and the police got out of hand and I made a video documenting how I was escaping Russia forever. Check it out right here.